28 one-of-a-kind cabins on a five-acre historic site. Great for families, couples, and groups. And cabins are available with one to seven bedrooms. Golden Bear Cottages is just a stone's throw from Big Bear Lake and super close to three great ski areas. Now, I could go on all day about Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear, but to see everything... Just go to goldenbear.net. Again, goldenbear.net. Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear. Clean, comfortable, and affordable. Check them out. Goldenbear.net. Come visit the all-new Tiger Trail at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Get an early start and have a bountiful buffet breakfast at Tiger Trail San Bhutan Longhouse while watching these majestic creatures. A tiger keeper will be on hand to share stories about these fascinating felines and will invite one of the tigers to join the session. Then explore the Tiger Trail's 5.2 acres, watch the tigers climb rocks, swim in ponds, and nap in tall grasses. See these beautiful animals up close, all at the new Tiger Trail at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Go to San Diego Zoo Safari Park. KCAA is your CNBC news affiliate. We're the station that gets down to business. KCAA. This is KCAA. This is the Ray Lucia Show. Coming to the best for the answers here. The one show that helps you make better money moves and provides strategies and solutions for your biggest financial challenges. You guys talk about a lot of really good information that even I can understand. Call Ray now at 844-RAY-SHOW. 844-R-A-Y-S-H-O-W. This is the Ray Lucia Show. Well, is there a little bit of boom left before the doom? Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is the Ray Lucia Show. Jeremy Grantham from GMO seems to think so. He has been very bearish, but today he comes out and says there's still a little bit of boom left before the doom. 844-RAY-SHOW is the number if you'd like to get on board. Also, a common retirement assumption that many of us make, especially well ahead of retirement or those of us nearing retirement. And that assumption is flat wrong. Lynn Rowe uh, standing on the sidelines today. We're going to check with Lynn on some post-retirement health care. Chris Jarvis, what Saudi Arabia has basically spent $50 billion on. We'll check in with him. A great show planned for you. So sit back, relax. The Good Life Revolution with Ray, that's me, starts right now. 844-729-7469. If you want to call, emails at raylucia.com, R-A-Y-L-U-C-I-A.com. And like us on Facebook, The Ray Lucia Show, or follow us on Twitter at Ray Lucia, Bobby Wooldridge, B-Dub. And we have some announcements coming up, so you want to follow us on social media. Another Investor Summit coming oh, up. Oh, that's right. The Accredited Investor Summit will be uh, happening in Portland. We'll give you more of the details in the next 24 to 48 hours, but it's happening in Portland, one of my favorite hotels. We've just got to, I, I can't say it yet, but it's one of the really good hotels. And you know what we decided to do? What's that? We're going to feed people big time. Because last time we had this continental, it was on a continental breakfast. It was continental breakfast, but we also had like an omelet bar. And people went nuts over the omelet bar. None of this, you know, stupid donut thing with a couple of grapes. All right? No, no, no. This is the real deal. So uh, if, you, if you want to attend, we'll give you more details on that. Or just shoot me an email at RayLucia.com, and I'll make sure you get on the reservation uh, list. It's going to be great. That was The last one was awesome. This one's going to be awesomer. Ooh, I'm in. Okay. 
Uh, let's start with uh, Jeremy Grantham. Now, Jeremy Grantham has been perennially in the recent past bearish, saying the stock market's going nowhere over the next seven, eight years to speak of, nowhere to speak of, maybe three, four, five percent. Uh, which, you know, when you consider interest rates at near zero, that's not such a bad thing either. But he is a hedge fund manager. GMO is the company that he oversees, hundreds of billions of dollars, very, very uh, uh, substantial company. He's the principal of the uh, Boston-based Grantham Mayo Van Otterloo and Company, more commonly known as GMO. And he expects investors can capture another 8% plus return on stocks from present levels before the market reaches fully inflated bubble territory. Now, what I'm asking Jeremy to do is to tell me the exact day that bubble's going to burst so I can get out, but he can't do that. As a matter of fact, if you've listened to him the last couple of years, uh, you probably would have been scared out of the market and scared away from some fairly substantial returns. But he says, based on the Schiller uh, cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio, that market valuations have been 60% higher than at any time in the previous 100 years. Well, not at any time, but the average of the last 100 years. Uh, and that is true. That is true. But then again, interest rates have been lower, way lower than the averages for the past 100 years. So how much of this, quote, overvaluation can be explained away by the significantly lower interest rates, many of whom believe they're actually going to go lower, not higher from here. Very, very interesting. The Fed says, no, the Fed wants to raise interest rates. And we're certainly awaiting some economic news to demonstrate that uh, the Fed will have the gumption to actually do so. In either event, uh, very, very smart people expecting the market to continue to go up until what? Until it doesn't. And this is why we don't have strategies like go away in May and come back around Halloween. Because if you go away in May and come back in Halloween, historically speaking, you have made a ton of money. We're going to cover that next hour. But I don't believe in any of that. However, I will say this. Every year about this time, I talk about rebalancing. Because there is some efficacy to the strategy of going away in May and coming back sometime around, around Halloween. Let me see if I can find this. Okay, here we go. The six-month period from November through April has gained 548.3% for the Standard & Poor's 500 since 1990, eight and a half times the 65.1% return achieved during the six months from May through October. So that's pretty compelling. It's pretty compelling, but I don't believe in all or nothing. What I do believe in is some strategic rebalancing. In other words, if you're going to pick a time of the year to rebalance your portfolio, logic would dictate with those kinds of odds, logic would dictate that now is about the time to do it. You've made really good money over the past few years. If you're overweight in a certain sector or if you're overweight stocks compared to bonds or if you're overweight equities compared to what your plan calls for, now would probably be a good time to lighten up on the equities in favor of buying something else. Uh, I'm not real fond of buying bonds right now, but I might look for alternative strategies, either in the bond market, be it private debt or fixed or indexed annuity contracts, or perhaps uh, a structure, you know, like, like the accredited investors uh, workshops, we talk about other alternative investments. Certain people can tolerate the risk of that, others cannot. This is where your advisor can be of great help to you. So why not call your advisor? No, 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 no. Don't say, take me out of the market. Because neither Jeremy Grantham nor Ray Lucia nor anyone else 
can tell you with any degree of certainty, and Grantham's not saying to do that, by the way, uh, with any degree of certainty that that's the right thing for you to do. But if you have not rebalanced your portfolio in the last couple of years, now's probably a pretty good time to do it. Because one of the reasons why those numbers are so dramatic is the bulk of the crashes have occurred in September and October. So therefore, if you come back in November, Halloween, you know, you go away in May, you come back on Halloween or the day after, it's November 1, right? So May through November, so November through April, the uh, performance has been significantly, eight and a half times better than May up to November or through October. Anyway, I don't believe in a lot of that. I do believe in rebalancing the portfolio. Okay, now, uh, common retirement assumptions that are flat wrong. Ashlea Ebling covered this. And what's interesting is she talks about the Employee Benefit Research Institute's 2015 Retirement Confidence Survey, which we've discussed in brief terms. Here's the reality, she says. Half of retirees reported leaving the workforce unexpectedly. So people that think they're going to work long into retirement, half of them are not. While some of those, 31%, did so because they're able to afford early retirement, only 31% actually were able to afford the early retirement. Many cited hardships. 60% cited disability. Changes at their company, such as downsizing or closure, 27%. Caring for a spouse or another family member, 22%. Changes in the skills required for their job, 10%. Caring for a spouse or another family member. More than one out of five people are forced into early retirement because they've got to care for a spouse, therefore shortchanging their and their spouse's ability to retire in comfort and safety. Or when we come back, we'll talk about that in particular and the whole retirement assumptions that are flat wrong with Lynn Rowe, certified financial planner. She's a bright one. Make sure you stick around. 844 Ray Show, if you got a question for Lynn. We call her Linny around here. Linny, the CFP, 844-729-7469. Again, emails at raylucia.com, R-A-Y-L-U-C-I-A.com. Stick around. The Ray Lucia Show continues right after this. Here's breaking news. My Pillow is now the official pillow of the National Sleep Foundation. And to celebrate, Mike and all the men and women who proudly make My Pillow right here in America are sharing their best offer yet. For a limited time, when you buy one of My Pillows, I'm going to give you the second one absolutely free. That's a savings of 50% on what I guarantee you will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Enter promo code MY100. And Mike will give you a second my pillow absolutely free. Try the pillow, you'll like it. I love snuggling up to bed with my pillow. My pillow has been a godsend for me, and I love it. It's the perfect pillow. It really did change my life. Don't spend one more sleepless night on pillows that simply don't work. Call the number on the screen or go to mypillow.com and get fitted for your very own my pillow, the official pillow of the National Sleep Foundation. Listen to KCAA Loma Linda for less confrontation and more information. Bob Vila here with my home improvement tip of the day. If a plumbing pipe ruptures inside your home, it's likely going to be a disaster. But properly installed pipe insulation can help prevent that, keeping water in your pipes from turning to ice, expanding, then bursting to create a mega mess. Insulation also cuts down on heat loss and keeps water warm as it makes its way to your faucets. Cold water pipes benefit from insulation too, especially during summer months when humid air would otherwise condense on the pipes and cause corrosion. Besides insulation protecting pipes, it also protects people from being injured by contact with very hot or very cold pipes. There are plenty of styles and materials to choose from, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. In many freeze-prone areas of the country, pipe insulation is not only a good idea, it's the law. 
check local building ordinances before you head to the home center. Get more info at bobvila.com and right here at home with me, Bob Vila. Hi, everybody. Ray Lucia here. You know, we just saw the biggest jump in mortgage rates in more than 25 years. So now it's more important than ever to lock in your loan with a professional who has a thorough understanding of this wild mortgage market. That pro, Steve Allidord, the loan financial planner from Rancho Financial. Steve is one of the top 1% of mortgage originators in the entire country. And for years, Steve has worked with me, my family members and friends, and in most cases, will close your loan in 30 days or less. Time is critical if you're ready to buy or refi. No one knows where rates will go next. Learn the advantages of working with a direct lender who can fast track your loan. Steve Allador can calculate which program is best for you and educate you about all of your options. Call the loan financial planner, Steve Allador, at 888-563-1070. That's 888-563-1070. Or watch Steve's free home loan webinar at loanfinancialplanner.com. That's loanfinancialplanner.com. Are your student loans making life miserable? Optimum Student Solutions can now help consolidate your federal student loans. That's right. We can help lower your monthly payment on your federal student loans. In some cases, you can lower your monthly payments in half. It doesn't matter how much you owe, even if you are in default on your federal student loans. Just call us right now and find out if you qualify for these substantial savings. We'll help you remove your default status, lower your monthly payments, and stop wage garnishments. Let our experts eliminate the confusion and find the best payment solution for you. All you have to do is make the call. If you are a teacher, nurse, police officer, firefighter, or work for a nonprofit, new federal programs are available that may have a portion of your student loan forgiven. Stop worrying and start saving. Call now, 800-375-1159. That's 800-375-1159. Get free information. Call now, 800-375-1159. That's 800-375-1159. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Ron Pritchard. For this morning, we've got a chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy and a high near 65. Tonight, mostly cloudy, a low near 54. Saturday, cloudy, turning mostly sunny with a high near 68. Saturday night, cloudy skies, a low near 53. Sunday, mostly cloudy skies, becoming sunny with a high near 73. Sunday night, patchy fog, otherwise partly cloudy skies with a low near 53. Memorial Day, patchy fog, otherwise mostly sunny with a high near 79. Monday night, mostly clear, low near 54. Tuesday, sunny, high near 78. Tuesday night, mostly clear, low near 55. Wednesday, sunny with a high near 79. Wednesday night mostly clear, low near 54. That's your weather forecast for this hour from the station that leaves no listener behind. NBC News Radio AM 1050 KCAA. Listen to KCAA Loma Linda for less confrontation and more information. What we have learned from the Employee Benefit Research Institute is, unfortunately, stuff happens. I know you're going to talk about stuff happening, too. But here's what she determined, or they determined. The expected retirement age, 1991 versus 2015. Those that expected to retire before age 60, 19% in 91, 2015, 9%. I guess because they could. 60 to 64, 31% thought they would retire, down to 16%, cut in half. Why? Probably not enough money. Interest rates super low. Despite the fact the stock market's super high, but remember a lot of those people bailed out of the stock market the last couple of crashes. Age 65, the so-called normal retirement age for my parents' generation, 34%. But instead, only 21% made it that far because they were forced into early retirement due to other considerations. 66 to 69, 2% versus 10%. A lot of people in 91 said, forget about retiring that late. Now, people, many of them forced into retiring later if they're healthy enough to do so. And then 70 or older. 26% today versus 9% before. In other words, you make an assumption as to when you might want to hang up your cleats, so to speak, 
uh, or your tennis outfit or whatever. I don't want to be sexist here. But the fact is, when you quit retirement doesn't have a lot to do with how you feel about when you want to retire. It has a lot to do with not only your health, but family members' health. And as I said before the break, 22%, 22% of the individuals left work early to care for a spouse. That can take a big bite, Lynn, out of your retirement. Absolutely, and, and this is everything we've been talking about for, gosh, years, right? People are, are making assumptions about the fact that they're going to be able to retire um, and have a certain amount of income from that retirement plan. They need to look in, as we talked about last week, they're six o'clock, uh, which means they need to know about all of these unforeseen contingencies and kind of plan for those. You know, uh, it's, it's very, very frustrating. It's exceptionally frustrating because we all, I think, know that health care is an issue. But so many of us are just afraid. We're afraid that to, to face the reality that it's going to happen to us. It's always the other guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, the president of American Association of Long-Term Care uh, says that uh, right now, the average for men is about one half. What do you mean the average for average men? Average men who need long-term care. So half of our listeners out there, half of the guys. The males who, that are out there yes, are going to need long-term care. Are going to need long-term care So in there's, their there's at least two or three or four men around here. So yeah. two of us are going, boys. That's right. Yeah. Well, that I mean, that, that kind of makes sense. What about women? And, and here's the point that you were making earlier. Guess, in most cases, if they're at home, who takes care of them? Yeah, that's the that spouse, would be the wife. The wife yeah. yep. Which means, according to Fidelity, her life expectancy just got shortened because of the stress, the lack of sleep, the illnesses that come as a result of being that caregiver. But women, we're, in t we're just in trouble. Three out of four of us. Three out of four of us are going to need care. Is that because women just typically live longer and there's more opportunities for them to have some other kind of malady? I'm sure that's part of it. Um, I'm sure it's also in part because they were caregivers. And what we're seeing is that these caregivers have back injuries, they have joint injuries, they have depression, um, early Alzheimer's. I mean, it, basically, it just the stress is too much for them. Talk shows have depression, too. Yes, that's true. Uh, listen, this is, this is very, very serious. And when we talk about the costs, I mean, it scares people. The costs are frighteningly high. Yeah. So how do you get people... To, to say, okay, I'm willing to take a bite of the apple because I know I can't afford the whole thing. Well, Ray, I, I always try to get people to start with their budget first because if you go onto a car lot and say, what does a car cost, what are they going to show you? The Ferrari. They're going to show you the Ferrari. And they're not going to tell you about the Buick or the Ford in the back lot. It's perfectly fine, looks good, feels good, drives good, you know, but they're just not going to sell you that right up front. I'm not buying a Prius. Yeah. I, I refuse. understand. I refuse I get to buy a Prius. Just, <laughs> That's a different yeah, lot. Yeah. I, 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 here, here's the thing, though. I mean, you, you've got a tough job. You mm -hmm. know you've got a really, really tough job. Yes. Because you've got to come talk to guys like me mm -hmm. that, you know, think ne nothing's ever going to happen to them. No. And, You're and, convin and convince me to take some of my hard earned money out of my wallet yes. and spend it every year on something that's not going to happen for 20 years. Yep. I understand. But in 20 years, let's just talk about those costs because you, you brought up a good point. In Midland, Texas, it doesn't sound bad at all, right? Have you been 80, to Midland? I have not been to Midland. I've been there many, many times. Wow. Well, you're one up on me. And, and in Midland, it's not so bad. It's only 80000 a year. It's not so bad. It's only 80000 well, a year. Well, I say that in comparison to San Francisco, that's 146000 a year for skilled care. So if you're in San Francisco, move to Midland, I guess, <laughs> is the point. Ah, not so fast, cowboy. Um, the, in, in Midland, the average, and, and again, the last five years of inflation have been lower than we've seen in this generation. But for long-term care, not so much. 8% per year. 8% per year compounded inflation in Midland, Texas. Texas. So if you take that little $80,000 a year and project it 20 years for all those 55-year-olds out there who are saying, you know, I won't need it for 20 years, that's $373,000 a year. For a year. Is that going to take a the plug on. huge bite just out of it? pull the plug. Better yet, take a few dollars today and buy discounted dollars. Okay, so what you're saying is take a few dollars today, but 
I, I want to focus on this because the, the complaints, that, not complaints, but the comments that I get from the peanut gallery, which are our <laughs> audience, as you know, uh, it is, yes, but I don't want to take a few grand a year out of my budget. So how do you convince them to do that? Because I, yeah, obviously I respond to these emails and I say, Lynn Rowe tells me you should buy long-term care. You talked me into doing it. It took a few no, years. No, Jeannie talked you into well, doing it. Well, that's true. You <laughs> talked her into doing it. But, but, but how, how do you convince people to buy something they don't want to buy, even though intuitively they know they're going to need it? When we come back from the break, we will challenge Miss Lynn Rowe, certified financial planner. With that, you got a tough job, kiddo. Hey, I'm up to the challenge. All right. When we come back, it's Lynn, and she and I are going to debate this. She's going to have to sell me once again because it's been eight years now, I think, and nothing's happened to me. That's right. I guess that's a good thing. That is a good thing. All right, 844 ratio. If you have a question for Lynn, this may be one of the most important financial decisions you ever make, especially if you live in some place like San Francisco. 844 729 7469. Emails at raylucia.com. Take a quick break. Be right back. Accidents. Nobody likes to think about it, but if you were the victim of an accident, what would happen to your family? In addition to the tragedy of your loss, they'd have to deal with the stress of one less paycheck, possibly the only paycheck. Help protect your family with insurance through Matrix Direct. You can get $50,000 of coverage for less than $9 a month. There's no medical exam, no health questions, no application. Call 1-800-882-8203. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about... Poor Barack Obama. He's been making more flashy moves than an Olympic ice skater, trying to get Democrats in Congress to cheer his Trans-Pacific partnership. But instead, they're roundly booing him. The president is on such thin ice with this ponderous giveaway to global corporate giants that his appeals for support have turned desperate, including this recent claim that TPP is, quote, the most progressive trade deal in history. Wow, that's a low bar. Does he mean more progressive than the thoroughly regressive NAFTA? Or maybe he's comparing TPP to King George III's East India Trading Company, which was such a bully that it sparked the American Revolution. Indeed, Obama is trying some bullying of his own. He's pushing the lie that such Democrats as Senator Elizabeth Warren are lying when they point out that TPP would let foreign corporations sue the U.S. in corporate-run international tribunals to force our officials to weaken or kill laws that might pinch a corporation's profits. There is no chance, zero chance, of that happening, the president barked. But as he knows, it already has happened. In April, under another trade agreement, his own administration was directed by a WTO tribunal to change and essentially gut a U.S. food labeling law that has dramatically reduced the killing of dolphins by commercial tuna fishing fleets. Responding to public outrage over the mass slaughtering of the mammals, our Congress passed an effective dolphin-free law. But some tuna operations in Mexico complained that using dolphin-free nets hurt their profits and the WTO ordered our sovereign nation to surrender our law to the dolphin-killing Mexican profiteers. This is Jim Hightower saying, by claiming that, quote, no trade agreement is going to force us to change our laws, President Obama is either lying or he doesn't know what's in his own agreement. Gardeners have a mind-boggling choice of pepper varieties these days. A few suggestions for both sweet and spicy taste today from the old Farmer's Almanac. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. 
And you can for free by calling 1-800-945-9498. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-945-9498. 1-800-945-9498. With more practical tips and useful advice, this is the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report for Monday, May 25th. Memorial Day is the 145th day of the year. Actor Mike Myers is 51, and poet Ralph Waldo Emerson was born on this day in 1803. Peppers come in a greater variety than ever. Here's a few introduced in recent years that we think are worth checking out. A good choice for rookie gardeners is Cayenetta. These chili peppers are easy to grow and do especially well in containers. If you like sweet peppers, consider the varieties Carmen or Orange Blaze. In vivid red and orange hues, they both mature about 10 to 12 weeks after planting. And Cajun Bell is a popular choice if you like just a bit of hotness. They yield up to 50 tiny bell-shaped peppers per plant, and they also do well in containers and small gardens. That's the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report. Learn more at almanac.com. Down to Earth Talk, a show designed to inspire, encourage, build, and bring laughter to listeners. Down to Earth Talk, where we take everyday topics and issues and put them into practical, down-to-earth terms. Topics include relationships, parenting, finances, sports, and entertainment. That's Down to Earth Talk, Saturdays, 5.30 p.m., right here on KCAA, 1050 a.m. KCAA Loma Linda, your CNBC news station for the Inland Empire. Hey, welcome back, folks. The Ray Lucia Show bringing you the best in money information every day. Make sure you tune in because you miss a minute on this program. You may miss a lot. A special uh, howdy to Bob in San Francisco. One of the big fans of the show. Hey there, Bob. We'll talk to Bob a little bit later. Thanks for tuning in, Bob. Every day for all of these years, God bless you. Uh, Lynn Rowe, my special guest uh, who appears here every week. And I give you a lot of trouble on this subject because so many people just flat don't want to spend money on something that's so important as long-term care. Vacations are way more important. You know, Christmas presents and all the other stuff that gets in the way, like life right. that gets in the way. So you got a tough job. Sell me. Well, Ray, do you have uh, any kind of emergency fund set aside? Of course. Everybody's got an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. What's it earning? Nothing. And have you used it recently? Not in 40 years, 30 oh. years. Okay, then we can put that money to work. We can transfer that asset, keep it as a safe money account. We can put it into an account that will say quadruple if you need care. And if you pass, it comes back to the family, generally speaking, between two and three times what you put in. Okay, so, that sounds pretty good. That's a pretty good sales pitch. There you go. <laughs> what if I don't have an emergency fund? Well, then we talk about budget. Budget. All right. So, you know, um, you, you were mentioning, like, mm -hmm. San Francisco, 130000 yep. bucks for, for care. 146000 yes, who's sir. counting. Right now. And it goes up at 6% a year or whatever that between number seven was. 7 and 9. 7 and 9%. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, I know. But that's, that's what? That's skilled nursing? That is skilled care. In all okay. fairness, we are talking about skilled care. And 70% of the claims going into the insurance companies today are home care claims. Okay, so which, I'm not as freaked out now because yes, it's at a least, manageable risk. At least I can be a burden on my wife in my house. No, that would not be a good idea. Okay, so explain <laughs> to me about home care. Home care, you're probably talking twenty, twenty one bucks an hour yeah. for somebody, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So if you needed eight hours of care a day, yeah. that's hundred and sixty bucks a day. Yeah. That's a little more doable. That's doable. Plus, there are plans where you can you can buy that home care discounted hours concept, and that home care, I mean, you can get it down to $100 a month if you want to. What, the home care or the cost of the buying cost the home care? The cost of buying a package the of insurance. hours for home care. It's yeah, not insurance, so, but it's a package so of hours. So you're telling me mm -hmm. that individuals could at least take a bite out of this apple for 100 bucks a month even. Yes. Yes. Uh, you're, obviously, they're not going to get, you know, super, super coverage, but they're going to get something. They're going to get something. And I did that for a couple here recently in, uh, in San Diego for 100 bucks a month for each of them, and they were thrilled. All right. So then the question is, all right, mm -hmm. how long do people really need 
this care? How long does it go on? Well, according to the American Association of Long-Term Care Insurance, the rough stats are about 44% are in less than one year. 44% of the folks who need care are in less than one year. All right, so, so you could end up getting a lot of your money back if, uh, if, if you went for less than a year, but you're not likely to get it all back if you've been paying for the last 20 years. Well, exactly. It depends on the plan that you bought, but yes. That's correct. All right, so so that's the risk. I guess mm -hmm. the risk is you don't have an extended stay or any you know great need, but that might also uh, uh, lend some credibility to some of these life insurance policies mm -hmm. with the long-term care riders that you've talked about, exactly. because everybody's going to die someday. Yep. So you're assured of getting all of your money back. Right. It's really just a question of when. So if you bought a life insurance policy mm -hmm. that provided for long-term health care, and many of them have riders, can you explain that? Because a lot of people don't understand how that works. It's Well, there are lots of ways to, to construct that, but basically what you said is exactly the way it is. You buy life insurance. The life insurance you can put in, again, that lump sum, or you can put in small amounts um, over a period of time, or you could um, have it paid up in, say, 10 years or so. So the bottom line is you could have that policy in place so that if you passed, something comes back to your family. You haven't just put a lot of money into long-term care. But at the same time, if you need the care, the care is there. Yeah, so, so the, the way package. the life insurance policy would work then is it's an accelerated death benefit. That's you buy right. a policy for $200,000, mm -hmm. that's the death benefit. And to the extent that you have some kind of a chronic illness or a critical care need, right. you get to tap into the death benefit early. In other words, the insurance company knows they're going to pay out 200000 bucks. It's just a question of when. They allow you to tap into the death benefit before you die, basically, right? And oftentimes there's a rider on there that carries it beyond, say, the two years or whatever it is it took to pay out the death benefit. Um, and if you, with some companies, you can actually purchase a lifetime benefit. Yeah, so, so it makes no sense for people not to at least explore this. So yes. getting back to my biggest gripe, mm -hmm. and what I hear from the people that email me, mm -hmm. is, okay, I'm smart enough to figure this out. Right. I've read the statistics. Yes, I know the odds are against me, but I just refuse to take money that I've got earmarked for some other need, albeit you might consider that need minor. I need a new car, right? Well, just drive the old one, dude, and provide for your family. Uh, let's face it, that just doesn't resonate anymore mm -hmm. with the average American citizen. Mm -hmm. I hate to say that, but it's true. <clears throat> well, you've also talked about the fact, Ray, that for um, many people, they can take a look at the portfolio and they can make some adjustments and have a higher return, maybe 1% return difference, get some of that money put to work and that might generate enough cash flow to be able to pay for the coverage without it coming out of their pocket? Yeah, in my uh, anecdotal experience anyway, I can tell you that in almost 100% of the cases, maybe not a full one percentage point, but you can cut fees, mm -hmm. you can cut taxes, mm -hmm. you can change asset allocation models, you can do a lot of different things, mm -hmm. in particular in the tax planning uh, area, yep. that, that will generate free money to the investor. It just takes a little bit of time and a decent financial advisor to go through that uh, with you because all you need to really create, depending on how big a portfolio you have, mm -hmm. is maybe a half a percent. A person that's got $500,000 uh, in, in a portfolio, a half a percent is 2500 bucks. That's enough to get you a nice bite out of a long-term care insurance policy. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that people don't understand is that I, I drive the train by the budget. Let's look at the budget. I mean, if it, if it comes from the uh, investments, great. If it comes from your current cash flow, if it comes because a car payment got paid off, if it comes because Social Security benefits are coming in and, and with your pensions and so forth, you're thinking, well, we're not going to need to take money out of the portfolio, so we take only some of the return out. I mean, there's so many things that, that if you crunch the numbers, you can find the ways to pay for the coverage, and the coverage will protect the investments that you have, and not just for the kids. Sometimes I hear people say, well, you know, I, I, when I'm gone, the kids are going to be fine. I'm not as concerned about the kids as I am about your spouse. What's going to happen to him or her when you've used up a big part of that portfolio for your care? Yeah, speaking of that, now, um, 
I've become much more favorably disposed to reverse mortgages lately. Mm -hmm. In particular, another great the line the line of credit reverse mortgages, where yeah. you just don't take all the money today. Mm -hmm. You get a line of credit. That credit line actually increases every single year, but you could tap into that line mm -hmm. to pay for your long-term care insurance costs, could yes, you not? absolutely. It's a great tool. We've used that many times when people, um, you know, they're looking at their cash flow and retirement and they're thinking it's going to be a little bit tight. Having a reverse mortgage can be a godsend. So, so this First of all, the house payment goes away if they had one. Well, that's true. And secondly, once the house payment is gone, like you say, you could have an income from it. Um, so there's lots of things you can do. Or you can just take that money out tax-free from the reverse mortgage to pay for the long-term care costs. Because if 70% of us are going to need some kind of long-term care and we clearly can't afford it, mm -hmm. uh, you go to your kids and you say, kids, listen, this is your inheritance one way or the other, right? Because the kids are going to pay yeah. either way. Yep. So you can either take money out of your pocket now and provide care for me so you get the house, or we'll take out a reverse mortgage and buy a policy. Which one's going to be most effective to you? Well, most of the kids are going to say, hey, take the money out of the house. Because if you took 4000 bucks out per year and you have a three hundred or $400,000 house, the house is appreciating enough each year Oftentimes to usually offset, offset yes. a good chunk of that. So, you know, a, a lot of the things that have been taboo in the past are now on the table because the federal government's got involved. Yep. Nobody's losing their houses anymore because of a reverse mortgage. They're right. actually fairly competitive. You got to go jump through several hoops in order to get them. But we just found the money for you if you own a home. Either get rid of your mortgage payment by doing a reverse mortgage or tap into a line of credit, which assuredly goes up every single year. So there's still going to be equity that you're creating beyond the payments for the long-term care insurance. This, to me, is a no-brainer. And don't you worry about your kids, all right? <laughs> don't worry about them. They want you to live a happy, mm -hmm. healthy life. Sure. And if you get sick, they don't want to be the ones that are the caregivers. Trust me on that. They don't want to have to do it. They want to enjoy time with you, not the ugly times when they're cleaning up after you, but the good times where you have a smile on your face. Lynn Rowe, yes, you taught me well, didn't you? Oh, it's, we're a team. Right? All right, we'll be back. This is KCAA. Exploring Science in the Sea. Beaches can be fragile. Wind and waves grind away at them while human development can choke them off. And big storms can wash them away in hours. That leaves a question for the folks in charge of a damaged beach. In strictly economic terms, is it worth the cost to replace it? In the case of one small beach in Texas, the answer seems to be yes. A team of researchers found that the beach contributes much more to the economy than it would cost to replace it. The researchers conducted a survey of beachgoers at a park near Matagorda, Texas. The park is a good way from any major city, so for much of the year, it's pretty quiet. The researchers visited the park at different times of year, late summer, winter, and during spring break. They asked the beachgoers about their activities, how well they liked the beach and its facilities and even whether they thought there was too much seaweed. Most important, they asked how much money each group on the beach spent on its visit. Travel costs, hotels, food, and so on. That added up to about $1,200 per person. Multiplied by the estimated number of visitors, that's somewhere between $2 million and $18 million per year. The Matagorda Beach has never had to be restored, so the researchers looked at other beaches that have been, they estimated it would cost a bit more than $2 million to replace it. So based on the numbers alone, they concluded that if anything ever happens to the beach, it would be well worth the cost to replace it. This episode of Science in the Sea was made possible by Texas Sea Grant. For the University of Texas Marine Science Institute, I'm Holly Brawley. Do you have a broken window or rock chip on your vehicle that needs repair? Give us a call at HM Auto Glass, 951 858 5190. 
HM Auto Glass is your locally owned and operated auto glass specialist, offering low cost and high quality auto glass repair and replacement. We also work with all major insurance companies and offer free mobile service. So call us, 951 858 5190. That number again is 951 858 5190. Here's a look at the KCAA community calendar. I'm Di Rice. The City of Ukaipa, in collaboration with the Sheriff's Department and CAL FIRE, invite you to attend the 7th Annual Emergency Preparedness Expo Friday evening, May 29th. The expo will be an information-packed event featuring a wide range of exhibitors. The goal of the event is to educate participants on the required steps to prepare themselves, their families, and or employees for emergencies and develop a plan to reduce the impact of any disaster. Are you ready? Be sure to save the date, Friday evening, May 29th from 6.30 to 9.30 and join the City of Yucaipa for the 7th Annual Emergency Preparedness Expo, which will be held along California Street during the Yucaipa Certified Farmers Market. The expo will feature many vendors providing information, resources, and supplies essential to protecting our lives. That's a look at the community calendar. I'm Di Rice on KCAA 1050 AM. This is Dick from Carpet Masters. Carpet Masters has been serving the Inland Empire for over 55 years. Carpet Masters uses extraction cleaning for your carpet because there's no better cleaning to remove the soil from your carpet. All of our furniture cleaning is done by hand in your home or in our plant. Carpet Masters also offers dry cleaning for fine furniture. Call Carpet Masters at 793-7215. That's 793-7215 for Carpet Masters. Are you tired of dealing with your loved one's addiction to drugs and or alcohol? Are you ready for a solid recovery program that is licensed by the state of California and CARF accredited that is delivered by an experienced, professional, and caring staff that have a personal experience in recovery? Then call Anaheim Lighthouse at 877-959-5909. That's 1-877-959-5909 today to shine your life light again. K C A A. The Ray Program. Uh, this in the in Forbes, Nathan Vardy writes, "What Saudi Arabia has bought for 50 billion dollars in its oil war in October of 2014," he says, "that was just not too long ago. Saudi Arabia signaled that it was willing to let oil prices fall and no longer cut production to support higher prices. Since that time." Saudi Arabia has spent nearly $50 billion of its foreign reserves to keep its domestic social contract going in the face of diminishing oil reserves. Of course, since that time, they were pretty successful. Uh, according to what Nathan Vardy had to say, there are now about 700 rigs drilling for oil in the U.S. that has been either squeezed out, shut down, a couple of the firms filing for bankruptcy, but we've seen oil prices come back almost, what, 50%. Chris Jarvis on the line. He's our oil analyst. Chris, I guess this was a, uh, a bet that Saudi Arabia was willing to make, and it evidently has been working at least to this point. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think uh, the big thing that a lot of the listeners need to know is uh, Saudi Arabia has about three years worth of reserves. So um, they do have a big uh, cash hoard to uh, weather the storm, so to speak. And so certainly $50 billion sounds like a lot, but they're, they're up close to, you know, a trillion dollars in, in reserves right now. So they certainly can weather it out a bit longer as well. And they've inflicted a lot of pain on uh, what many would consider to be our enemies. Iran and Russia. 
in many respects. So I guess we can't gripe too much at that if we could only negotiate with those two bozos and get something that works for us and not just for them. But then again, I try not to get political, although I think I just did. <laughs> uh, go yeah. ahead. I'd like your... <laughs> Rarely is Chris Jarvis uh, not is searching for words. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead and respond to that. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, there's, there, there are about 20 different ways I could go with this, so I'll try to limit it to one. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the benefit, absolutely, the side benefits would be uh, our impact on some of the trouble spots here for the United States and, you know, Saudi Arabia as well with Iran. We both share Iran as a, as a political concern, uh, Russia as well, and then Venezuela. So certainly, so I guess the byproduct could say of these lower oil prices is as much as it's hurting here in, in Saudi Arabia, the pressure point or the pain points are a lot worse in those areas. So what's happened now with ethanol, uh, with electric cars, and all the stuff that, that, you know, when the Obama administration came in, the clean energy and all that stuff, what's happening with respect to that and with these lower oil prices? Um, it's uh, certainly in the rear view mirror. In fact, you don't even hear green energy anymore. I mean, when you got uh, gasoline prices, you know, two fifty, two dollars nationally. You look at natural gas prices, you know, approaching two dollars again. Uh, you know, all these alternative energies and green plays uh, certainly are not attractive when these fossil fuels are so cheap. Uh, but then again, there is global warming. I think there's a lot of scientists that believe that science not to be uh, junk. So. Uh, do you see that industry sort of fading into oblivion and will resurrect itself once oil prices get back up 80, 90, 100 bucks? Or is yeah. that industry going to be dead for a while? I think it's dead money for quite some time. I mean, I think this whole thing with global warming, you know, you go talk to somebody in Boston about global warming, they're probably going to have a, a pretty strong <laughs> argument. It's, it's not, uh, not feeling too toasty these days. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, from a green play, I think the only way that really works is uh, oil and natural gas uh, go considerably higher, um, you know, and that will drive uh, green energy and alternatives back in play. Other than that, I don't think anything else is really going to be the fuel to drive it or, you know, energize, the, you know, that area of the, the market. Well, the oil market is coming back. And uh, for you, Mr. Jarvis, at Pipeline Oil and Gas, you guys have been making acquisitions, taking advantage of the lower oil prices and uh, good to you good for you uh, Chris Jarvis pipeline oil and gas dot com get a copy of uh, Chris and Brian Brandon Cox's white paper on the tax benefits and everything you need to know about making an investment in oil and gas accredited investors only 800-996-3690 pipeline oil and gas dot com thank you Mr. Jarvis I do appreciate it you bet all right, it's time to hit the email uh, bag here. Uh, Frederick in Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, Ray. Love the show. Well, thank you, Frederick. We love your show. I'm deciding between using a front-loaded firm or investing in a broad-based no-load fund. I'm leaning towards the front-loaded firm, but I'm scared to pay a big fee up front and then have the market crash soon. Okay, let's dissect this, Frederick. You buy a front-end loaded mutual fund in order to pay your advisor. That's how the advisor gets paid. Front-end loaded funds aren't any better than no-load funds. No-load funds aren't any better than front-end loaded funds. The difference is paying an advisor. If you an advisor have an advisor that will talk you off the ledge, so to speak, it's probably worth paying them. It is probably worth paying them. In fact, uh, there, there have been some studies on this and that the fact that you pay a load, if it causes you to stay with your investment longer than having the liquidity where you can quick change and sell out without a cost, uh, you actually do better. You actually do better, not because the fund is better, Anybody that says that is just not being honest with you. Although there have been studies, once again, that have said certain load funds have done really well. But in general, you're talking about one mutual fund manager versus the other mutual fund manager. And it really does come down to how you pay for the advice that you're getting. So if you feel 
that you can invest on a disciplined basis yourself, X any advisor, and you will stick to your asset allocation, do some frequent rebalancing, not panic in a down market, buy the no load. If you feel you'd like to sit down with somebody every once in a while and talk about uh, planning and asset allocation and rebalancing, it's not a bad idea to pay a person that way. It's actually cheaper in the long run than paying 1% or 1.5% or 2% per year. So if you're leaning toward the front end firm, front end load firm, and it's coming with a really good advisor, go for that. All right, thank you, Frederick. Uh, Jerry, Ray, Mary, William, we'll try to get to your emails next hour. Remember, folks, we're on two hours every day. That would be nine on the Pacific Standard Time. And on the East Coast, of course, it's noon until 2 Eastern. Tune into the Ray Lucia Show. God bless. Go out and make it a great day. Bye-bye. You're listening to the Ray Lucia Show, taking calls from across the nation and answering questions about your biggest financial challenges. Ray Lucia is not a registered representative of or affiliated with any securities, brokerage, or investment advisory firm. The views and opinions expressed by Ray and his guests are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors and should not be construed as legal tax or investment advice. You should always consult with the appropriate advisors before making any financial decisions. Ray is available to take your questions at 844-RAY-SHOW or online at raylucia.com. You're on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm Chuck Kamlick, CNBC Radio. The backyard barbecue season is now officially underway. 